video will present a paper I recently published on image data augmentation for deep learning. The motivation behind data augmentation is to prevent overfitting. Overfitting refers to a phenomenon when deep learning models with high capacity exactly model the training data such that they don't generalize to the testing data. This is shown in this image where as the training error decreases, the testing error actually increases rather than continuing to decrease with the training error. So data augmentation shown right here in these uh, rotation images in the video on the left, is, an, is a way of doing manipulations on data such that you have uh, new data points. And uh, it serves as a regularizing effect such that you can hard code these translational invariances into your model. So you would want your image recognition model to be able to recognize the panda in the normal image and in the horizontally flipped image. So data augmentation has been applied a lot in the history of computer vision. In the Lacoon Net 5 on the MNIST uh, recognition task, this shows how they do, did uh, data warping to get more out of their MNIST data set. AlexNet also uses uh, data augmentation, and their data augmentation increases the ImageNet data set by a factor of 2048. And they do this by randomly cropping uh, 224 by 224 patches, clipping them horizontally, and then changing the intensity of the RGB channels. And so they directly attribute augmentation in the AlexNet paper to a 1% error rate reduction. So this is the taxonomy of data augmentations covered in this paper. We'll talk about basic Im image manipulations like color space transformations, geometric transformations, random erasing, mixing images, and kernel filters. Then we'll talk about deep learning approaches like generative adversarial networks, neural style transfer, and adversarial training. Then we'll see how these can be controlled with a meta-learning controller to get uh, an even better performance with data augmentation. So image manipulations are the most commonly used data augmentation in computer vision. This includes things like flipping, color space, cropping, rotation, translation, and noise injection. The image on the top right shows an example of some color uh, augmentations to this image. You'd want the com uh, convolutional neural network to be invariant to these color transformations and still be able to recognize objects despite uh, lighting differences. One other thing to consider with image manip manipulations is non-label preserving transformations. So for example, if you horizontally flip uh, the MNIST data set and you flip a 9 uh, horizontally, it's no longer really a 9. So with all these uh, image manipulations, they have an affiliated magnitude parameter. And there's always some level of distortion that is going to corrupt the label as well. So this is a comparison of augmentations by image manipulation in one study. So it's definitely interesting to search over the augmentation space of uh, classic image manip manipulations and see how the accuracy of your model changes. So in this case, you see that they get a much better performance result with cropping than the other augmentations. Another interesting idea is kernel filters. This is the patch shuffle regularization technique where they randomly shuffle around pixels in a 4x4 sliding window. Mixing images is another really surprisingly successful data augmentation. What they do is they extract patches and they just randomly average together the patches for each pixel and then they train the network. This may be successful because of the increased data set size, some kind of regularization effect. It's really unclear why exactly this works, but it does work well, which is surprising. They also uh, experiment with nonlinear mixing and all these interesting ways of mixing images to form new samples. Another very interesting technique is random erasing or cutout. This is used really frequently in state-of-the-art image recognition models. So what this does is it's like a dropout, but in the input space. So you have like this uh, rectangle that is placed on the images, and then instead of the original image, it's like all zero, all ones, or you know the static noise. So this is the results of applying cutout in the cutout regularization paper. And you see that they get a uh, like greater than 1% error rate reduction in almost all of the trials with it. Another interesting idea is feature space augmentation. So the way that convolutional networks work is they sequentially transform an image into a series of rank 3 tensors, where each dimension is a uh, number of feature maps, uh, height and width of the feature map. So this study, they, uh, they augment the image representations in these intermediate tensors, and then they decode them back into the image space. Another interesting way of doing this is adversarial training. So 
in addition to the phenomenons of adversarial examples, we could have an adversarial agent which is uh, constrained to a set of image manipulations like rotations and translations, and it's trying to select a geometric transformation that will result in a misclassification. And it is uh, beneficial to use these adversarial agents to direct the search process of augmentations. One really interesting idea is to use data from a generative adversarial network to augment data sets. Generative adversarial networks, uh, as shown on the slide here, take random noise and then they learn to generate new data based on the discriminator's loss function of real or fake. So eventually the generator is able to produce novel data samples. So it's really interesting to see, and this hasn't really been shown to work uh, successfully on data sets like ImageNet, but on this uh, liver lesion classification data set, they use this uh, technique of generating data and then just appending it to the data set. And they get these uh, 78.6 to 85.7 and 88.4 to 92.4. But other than uh, this uh, medical image domain, this hasn't really worked well on things like uh, ImageNet or even uh, CIFAR-10. So another really interesting data augmentation uh, that hasn't been explored too much is neural style transfer, using these uh, styles to augment images in interesting ways. And this goes beyond uh, just like color transformations, this really augments images in a semantic way. So style transfer has been really successful in robotic applications like this study from UC Berkeley where they uh, randomize the colors in the simulation such that the when the robot goes to the real world it generalizes because it just sees the color transformation as another uh, color set in the diverse data set it's been trained on. And then on the opposite end of that, rather than going for diversity, these the SimGAN model goes for realism and they take data from a graphics engine from like Unity and then they use the GAN to make it, uh, to align the generated data from the graphics engine with the original training set. So this brings the idea of meta-learning. Using some kind of controlling algorithm to search through this space of augmentations. So auto-augment is the most interesting uh, way of applying uh, reinforcement learning to basic image manipulations. So what they do is they search for a policy that selects a image manipulation like a rotation and translate, and then it will find a magnitude of uh, applying the operation like rotated 45 degrees or 70 degrees, and then it'll find a probability of applying the operation. So some other things to consider with data augmentation is test time augmentation. And this isn't good for applications that need fast inference and fast predictions, but if you want to increase the accuracy of your model, it would be useful to take, uh, to take the image and then augment it several times and then aggregate the predictions across the different augmentations. So like in AlexNet, what they do is they randomly crop uh, five 224 by 224 patches and then they horizontally flip them all and then they aggregate the predictions across these 10 pairs. Another thing is curriculum learning. In a recent paper presented in ICML 2019, population-based augmentation, they progressively increase the, uh, the magnitude parameter of image manipulation. So when they first start training the model, they might rotate it like 10 degrees or minus 10 degrees. And then as the training progresses, the rotations would get uh, larger, like 60 degrees or negative 60 degrees. Another interesting thing is the impact of image resolution on model performance. And it's not really uh, quite similar to the other things presented, but uh, frequently images are downsized to fit as input and to save computation. But this study shows that if you preserve the high resolution, you'll tend to get better uh, classification performance. So then one other consideration is online and offline data augmentation. So online data augmentation means that as it goes into the batch, it's augmented with some probability parameter. And then uh, offline would be where you uh, augment it in, uh, in preparation for the training and then write it to the disk, which has a storage cost. So there are some other regularization tools out there like dropout, batch normalization, transfer learning, pre-training, and then one shot and zero learning, zero shot learning. These are all techniques that are aiming to overcome the problem of overfitting, especially in the case of limited data domains like medical image analysis.
So again, this is the taxonomy of image data augmentation surveyed in this paper. Basic image manipulations, deep learning approaches, and then meta-learning approaches that use controllers to search for the augmentation parameters. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning videos. And please check out this paper, a survey on image data augmentation for deep learning, published in the Springer Journal of Big Data.